My friends, I'm waking up in the land of Lincoln in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, state number 35 of the 50 state shred. It's Illinois. As you know, I've been doing a lot of Walmart parking lot camping uh, over the past few months. So I decided to switch it up and holy moly, this is like a, a luxury. <laughs> this is like amazing. This is like Target versus Walmart. So nice. There's a there's a pond out here. It's just nice. I had it all to myself. There was one other trucker, just very serene. There have not been that many Cracker Barrels along the way. There's been a few here and there, but this one, when I was driving yesterday from Indiana, just tons of billboards, Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna stop. Usually, uh, that, that's not anywhere to be found because I'm in more rural areas, but uh, there's plenty of Walmarts to be found in the rural areas. The major benefit of the Walmart back in the day, pre-COVID, what seems like years ago now, is that a lot of them are 24 seven. So they're open all the time and they always have a bathroom ready to go. So now it's like this Cracker Barrel, This it's 6.01 AM right now, they ain't open. There's no bathroom to be had. So I've got to go find a gas station, go find the trailhead. Maybe there'll be a bathroom, who knows? I am SOL. Illinois is the second flattest state in the union behind Florida. Holy moly, the highest point is like 1200 feet. I had, I had no idea. I kind of expected a little bit more. And then I also saw on that list, North Dakota is one of the flattest states. Huh, I had no idea. I was expecting maybe a couple surprises, but there's just no such things as surprises anymore. <laughs> if there's good mountain biking, you would have heard of it and uh, it would have been a thing. Today's ride is at the Palos Forest Preserve. I was saying Palos until I actually met the locals and they filled me in on uh, what the actual pronunciation is. And we're about 40, mi or 40 minutes from Chicago, as my uncles call the Big Apple. And uh, <laughs> so I'm riding with Brian and Nick here today. Very, very cool. We're gonna take on these trails. Let's do it. It seems like there's 10 different parking lots out here, all kinds of different trailheads. It is a big old place couple of the parking lots I passed 7 a.m. on a Tuesday were already filled up. Whoa. <laughs> cool. So if you're following along at home on my map, 50statesshred.com, you're going to notice that I had to bypass Indiana because of the weather. So this is gonna be the first time where I'm gonna to have to go way out of my way to bag a state. Otherwise, everything was really lined up really perfectly. Never had to backtrack, but Brown County, it's gonna be a little while before I can get back there. Hey, <laughs> Perfect weather today. Got a great night's sleep in the van because it actually got cold. <laughs> no humidity, low 60s, perfecto. I read that the highest point in Illinois is uh, 1,200 feet and uh, somebody, it's like in somebody's backyard or <laughs> on their driveway. And a couple times a year, they open it to the public so people can come out and see the sights, <laughs> see, see the big view. It's all about prominence, you know? You can have areas where everything is 14,000 feet in the air and it doesn't seem like it's that big. But when you compare it to something at ground zero and it's 5,000 feet in the air or 4,000 feet in the air like Mount Diablo back home, it looks like a giant mountain. I think the most prominent mountain in the world is Denali or Mount McKinley in Alaska. It's got an elevation of 20,000 feet, but the surrounding area is only like 2,000 feet. So 18,000 feet of prominence. It's like the biggest thing you can see <laughs> in the world, just like, whoa. And I did go to Alaska years ago, maybe eight years ago now. And I got to see Denali and it was a perfect day. The mountain was out. Who knows if I'm gonna make it to Alaska this year, but that's all part of the fun of the 50 state shred. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, there we go. Yay. 
yeah, there we go. <laughs> Great flow. Brian has been riding out here for more than 25 years. Back when the, the horse folks wanted to put an end to mountain biking and somehow the bikers persevered and made it through. And now this area, probably a couple miles a year, gets built up by Camber, Chicago area mountain bikers. Oh, one back, one back. Brian also said these trails are both ways, so there can be quite a bit of conflict with the bikers themselves on a weekend when there's a million people out here. Oh yeah, super speed. One more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian was saying that Camber split off from IMBA, the International Mountain Bike Association, and man, it's such a it's a it's a tough thing if you're a part of a a bigger organization that's taking a cut of your membership money, and you're not feeling like you're getting much in return. It's just a no-brainer. You got to deliver. If you're IMBA, you have to find a way to be relevant and make things happen. If not, all the local people can be like, ah, we can do this. We can do it on our own. It reminds me a lot of CrossFit. CrossFit's just a brand name. And, you know, gyms want to be on the list to be able to compete in the CrossFit games. And they want to just be able to have that brand name because people know it. But what if <laughs> you're just throwing stuff around? <laughs> you're doing functional fitness. You're these gyms are paying thousands of bucks a month to the mothership for, uh, yeah, the brand name. I see it from the other side too. It's not until you have a ton of mountain bike clubs that you have that gravity and the funds to be able to lobby Congress or do things that are just way out of the scope that some local club could do. Man, I was hoping this year to actually visit a bunch of baseball stadiums along with the writing and the editing and the go, 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 which I, that was probably kind of a crazy idea. But man, baseball season's having a hell of a time. Probably by the time this video comes out, it has been canceled. <laughs> I've been knocking out these states so nicely that I have a really good buffer. So <laughs> whenever I recorded this video, it's probably five weeks ago. So uh, don't email me. I've already been, it's already done by the time you see this. I've got them all. Nick told me he was blown away when he first started mountain biking because he could actually get that flow feeling that he only thought was available snowboarding out west. Okay, we got a good first loop in. Time for a little drink. I seriously don't trust the zero sugar thing, but I'm giving it a try. I just, nothing comes for free. How can it be zero? Ugh. Definitely got that sugar addiction. Trying to, uh, trying to do a little better. Loop number one finished, and uh, that was about 13 miles. Now we're gonna do another eight mile looper. <laughs> Exciting! <laughs> Not gonna bring the rigid single speed hop for that. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that was sick. Man, it's really funny how 
this just always works out. <laughs> it seems like I would have to have a whole laundry list of like, hey, this is how let's do that. When you do that, let, don't do this. Don't do Because there's a million things that could happen that could kind of like mess up the ride and just turn it into a really crappy video, but it just always seems to work out. If you want to go fast and <laughs> not hang out, not talk, that's fine. I can just talk to myself. <laughs> If you want to go slow, I can go up ahead and wait for you. It's just continues to amaze me. I could go to all these different places, meet all these different types of people and still have a pretty good time every time. Wow, that's the magic of mountain biking. I can tell pretty quickly who the <laughs> the red flag people are in emails and stuff and I do my best to dance around them and humor them and keep them at arm's length so my detector is very strong my nose for weirdos oh but you're you're not the weirdo though no you you watching this right now no definitely not not you I'm talking about somebody else Caution, do not dig. Buried in this area is radioactive material from nuclear research. The actual, where they put all the scientists, where the actual nuclear reactor was, we're gonna head that next, about another half mile away. But when it was decommissioned and everything, they buried it here. And not knowing in the day, they didn't line it with cement, they didn't, they just buried it here. And so, they monitor wells and everything around here just to make sure. Yeah. But this was in the middle of nowhere back in the 40s. It was now no you got the Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> Super Target, <laughs> yeah. Barnes & Noble. None of this was here. So this was the road that used to lead to the nuclear reactor. Just picture old Enrico Fermi driving up here every day. Get some work done. You are now entering Site A. The world's first nuclear reactor was rebuilt at this site in 1943. Brian said he remembers coming out here in the 70s and there still being some structures before they really plowed it all under and turned it into this nice park. Oh, rider right back. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> down a little bit on that. Oh, I tried not to break into that berm. <laughs> there was support. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice little ride. Those guys were really fun to ride with. Brian's been riding 25 years. I've been riding about 10 years. So in 15 years, hopefully I'll be as strong as he is. You can definitely tell mountain bikers are out there on those trails, taking care of them, building berms, building little side hits and jumps and stuff. That is a whole lot of fun with very little elevation. You look around, it's like just barely little rolling, little bits and pieces, and they just squeeze every bit out of it actually did a post-ride restaurant meal. That's been something that's been very rare during this leg of the trip, but we went to Portillo's and uh, Brian was like, you gotta get the Italian meat. And I was like, no, oh, it's a hot dog place. I'm getting the hot dogs. We're in Chicago and the hot dogs were excellent. I think the Italian beef was probably pretty good too. 
One of the crazy adventures during this whole thing is the toll roads. Every single one is different. You just never know what you're gonna get. One of the latest ones was like, okay, toll, toll ahead, toll ahead, toll ahead. And it's like, oh, it's 60 cents. Oh, wait, it's a dollar 10. I'm like, ah, I used all my chain change at the car wash. I don't have any change. And then you get up right next to it and it's like, oh, we don't do cash anymore. It's all toll by plate. So I like signed into the website and I'm like looking, okay, did it check my plate? How much do I owe? It's not on there yet. And then multiply that by 10 or 20 different states and <laughs> I'm gonna have a warrant from my arrest for not paying the tolls like if you're not sending me a toll in the mail it's just not gonna happen and then there's even a couple states still taking cash still having a human <laughs> inside the toll booth bulldoze all the toll plazas get rid of it let's get rid of cash altogether moving on it's 2020 Thanks again to Brian and Nick. Oh my God, the weather is so perfect. We're like sitting outside eating hot dogs and just not sweating at all. Like my clothes are all gonna dry immediately. This is, it was perfect, just so good. He said last week it's all super humid and rainy and hot. I got very, very lucky. I've been doing so good with the weather, except for Indiana, which I'll get to eventually. Moving on, I'm heading north. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you on the trail.